Okay. Good evening, and welcome to the November 9th uh, regular meeting of the Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals. The meeting will now come to order. This is a public proceeding, and unless the board specifically goes into executive session, the public has the right to hear everything that is being said and heard, and to view all of the exhibits that are presented. Please notify the chairperson, which is myself, if you are unable to hear or see the proceedings. The board works from a prepared agenda and will take up tonight's items. The following order are call to order, our pledge of allegiance, our roll call, our approval of the minutes from last month, our approval of draft written decisions from the October 12th meeting last month. We have one appeal to, uh, this evening, appeal number 2741. Uh, we will have zoning board comments, which we'll talk about elections for next year. And then we will have uh, our adjournment. Uh, so before we get started, let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Okay, may we have the roll call, please, Noreen? James Seaver? Present. Richard Silkman? Here. Amy Here. David Bork? Here. Michelle Stevenson? Here. Christine Snow? Here. And Peter Fadner? Here. Excellent. Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes from October 12th? Uh, and folks who haven't there, uh, if you feel comfortable having uh, reviewed the material in your packets, you may certainly vote tonight if you feel you have reviewed the packet. Are there any questions or comments on the minutes from last month? I am seeing none, so I'll entertain a motion to move and approve the minutes. Mr. Bork? Is there a second? All seconds. Rudy Karen seconds. Uh, all those in favor, please raise your hand. That, uh, all, all those opposed? Uh, abstentions? One abstention, Mr. Silkman. I thought I could see that there. Thank you very much. Uh, all the rest are ayes, including myself. Uh, the minutes are approved. So we have the approval of the draft written decisions heard at the October 12th meeting. Uh, number one is the Shoreland Setback Determination by Michael Richmond of Concept Custom Concepts Incorporated on behalf of Harold and Kathy Caldwell, 64 Jones Creek Drive. Has everyone had a chance to review those findings of fact, conclusions, and does anyone have any edits or comments that they would like to enter into the record? Or corrections or anything? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the draft written decision for the, oh, we don't have the number on that, do we? It wasn't. It wasn't, it was a setback determination, that's why. Thank you very much. Mr. Bork. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Karen seconds. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Uh, opposed? Abstentions? Two abstentions. Thank you very much. And I am an aye for as long as I need to remember to vote. Um, our next to draft written decision, we have appeal number, that was appeal number 2739, a miscellaneous appeal by the Big Mountain Realty Trust, <coughs> 36 Running Hill Road. Has everyone had a chance to review and um, does anyone have any edits or comments for the record concerning these findings we had last month? Seeing none, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to approve the draft written decisions. 2739, Mr. Bork? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Karen seconds. All those in favor, please raise your hands. Uh, that is three, four, five, yay. Abstentions? Two abstentions. All right, tonight we have our one appeal, appeal number 2741. This is a practical difficulty variance appeal by Megan and William Bartholomew, uh, 229 Black Point Road Assessor's Map, U014, Lot 34. And I believe we have um, Megan and William Bartholomew here with us tonight. Yes. Welcome. Um, go ahead, the microphone is right there, so just introduce yourself and uh, give us a description of uh, why we are here. Okay. My name is Megan Bartholomew. Hello. This is William, my husband, William. And first of all, thank you for your time tonight and for hearing us. Um, we are here to request a variance to replace the deterior deteriorating garage and build a second level of our property at 229 Black Point Road. Um, we are hoping to remove and replace the existing non-conforming garage foundation in the same footprint as the existing, and then it add a second story to the existing non-conforming one-story dwelling and garage. So this proposed structure will be built on the existing footprint if approved. Yeah, sure. So if you're looking at the uh, survey, you can see the northerly corner of the house is, I'll give you a second to get there. 
Yep, steal them by 17. And all the way in the back of your packets. <clears throat> Go ahead. All right. The northerly corner uh, has approximately built uh, about 10.8 feet over the 15, the allowable 15 foot side side yard setback, uh, leaving a setback of 4.2 feet for one of the requests. The other non-conforming uh, corner is the southerly corner of the garage. It's built about 10.1 feet over the allowable 20 foot secondary frontage setback, leaving 9.9 .9 feet for the additional variance request. All right, great. We are in a position where we, we obviously love where we live. My grandfather built the house in 1952 and he built it predating any zoning restrictions. Um, we love the location, our kids, we don't want to move um, our kids out of this school district. And we have, we have consulted several real estate agents, including Rob D of Benchmark Real Estate, who um, quoted us the cost of a, an equivalent home in the same area would be about $600,000. Um, we have also consulted several um, um, contractors, including Mike Gallant of Southern Maine Remodeling, and they had all quoted us that it would be more expensive to build out as opposed to build up because of the foundation. So um, it, it made sense to us financially. Um, building a second story to the home would also have a less of an environmental impact than if we were to build out and create a larger foundation. And if the variance wasn't granted, it would be a total loss of the garage and the breezeway as the foundation's deteriorating. So this would be a significant financial injury to us. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, I'll have a, <coughs> any initial questions or comments from the board before we go into um, the findings here. Mr. Freilinger, go so ahead. Quick question. This lot is really strangely yes. designed or laid out. Yes. Is there any... Um, uh, background on that? How, how, how was this platted? It's well, odd. I think a little no, bit of background was it was um, my great uncle's property. Okay. He had a lot of land and he gifted my grandfather okay. the land. And I don't know how it ended up being in this funny <coughs> shape, but it did. And now here we are. So. It, I mean, it's incredibly deep and just very strangely narrow. Yeah. So, and, and, and again, this is nothing for what you guys are asking right. for, it's just yeah. odd. Yeah. So yes. I feel like the need to ask. Right, and so, and that is also a, a part of the reason why if we were to build out, it would leave us with this sort of, you yeah. know, no, V-shaped It's a strange piece of house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. We weren't aware yeah. of that either at the time of purchasing, you know, until, until we've moved forward with a project like this to learn about this type of stuff, you know, yeah. It, it, yeah. Yeah, definitely, I think just the history strange. of the gifting <clears throat> land through yeah. family. It is an old family Yeah, land, there's no so. leading question here. It's just yeah. Yeah. really strange right. in yeah. terms yeah. of the piece is, of property. Uh, and this is, you folks live there now. Yes. You and your family live there. You've lived there your entire lives. Um, and it's, again, it's a family generational yep. passing down. Um, that's great. That's really that's really great that you're able to, uh, willing to stay here in Scarborough. Um, I saw other questions from the board members? Mr. Bork? Yes, I'd like a little bit more information about the gravel road. Is that a public road or is that a private, private road? Private. There's three residences on the road. Okay. That's yes. their primary entrance. Yep. Okay. So it is a private road. Yes. Okay. So you would, have, you would have no access to that at all? Okay. No. Um, okay. Um, and, of course, there, there, there has been a recent determination on the... Uh, uh, secondary setback on a quarter lot, mm -hmm. you know, and one of your one of your diagrams shows that the other one shows the original. So yeah. we really need to be looking at the one where instead of forty feet, it's twenty feet. Yeah. Um, so it it gives you a much larger envelope to you know to consider. Yeah. Uh, and um, so at, in looking at that, uh, it appears that a house could easily fit into that expanded envelope going the other way. All right, but it would create a, a somewhat of a problem because the garage would have to be either in the front or well way in the back, you know, with a, a driveway along the side to get to the garage. Um, did, considering the estimates that you got, uh, 
could you be able, did you get specific uh, estimates of the uh, cost for each of the specific uh, options, you know, which would include demolition as well as the specific cost for you know, the uh, renovation or in the case of the tear down and rebuild, you know, to give us those kind of specific costs. And if so, do you, can, are you prepared to share that information with us? Of course, yes, I have it right here. It's not super detailed, but it, um, Mike Gallant did quote us that the cost of what we plan to do here, what we're requesting to do, would be about two hundred and twenty five <coughs> to two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. And the cost to build out and to give us an equivalent space would be about two seventy five to three twenty five because of the cost of the foundation. Sure. So then you're also talking environmental impacts as well for uh, if yeah. you're expanding your no, I understand, but you know, the, the ranges are relatively close to each other. From what I can see, there's only a fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollar difference you know, between one and the other. Yeah. And one would bring you more into conformance right. than than you know staying on the existing yeah. uh, foundation. Mm -hmm. um, so right. uh, just just trying to get a little more information as to you know is that a, you know, and we'll get to the specific criteria. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when it comes to the you know, two of them, really, one of them is uh, in conformance with the neighborhood in general. And also, and, and I don't want to get too far ahead out here, but the final one, which is the cost one. Yeah. Uh, but as, as far as the neighborhood in general, what are the orientations of the other properties of Body you? Okay, how do they face? <coughs> Can you describe the Same, the same direction. Yeah. There are Ours is a one-story ranch. Um, there's other, what are they, Cape-style houses yeah. uh, next door. They're all front-facing. Uh, facing Black Point facing Road. Black Point yeah. Road. Yeah. So it wouldn't be like facing, you know, the, yeah. the side street. Not that it's the side street you could, you could utilize, but that would be, it would really stand out as being different. Yeah. If you yes. were to orient it that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And the right, that's cost good. of the project would be substantially more to... About fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. From from what you have described. Yeah. Okay. But that's why I want to find mm -hmm. out. Thank yeah. you. Any other questions, comments? Go ahead, Peter. Just, uh, uh, um, I know it's fifty thousand dollars more, but in in addition to reorienting, there would also probably be a restructuring of the foundation of the house to do that as 100%. well. Yeah. Okay. I don't um, know if that was necessarily considered in that quote or not. Yeah, yeah and that's it? because again, looking at this property, it's a very odd wedged shape properly, property, and to get it more normally conforming would require a redirection and a reorientation 100%. of the foundation. I, I think, yeah. honestly, it would put us closer to the quote of purchasing a new house. Yeah, that's... Uh, versus I'm, just building a second level. Got it. I, and, and, and again, just want to clarify that. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Now, right. let's follow up to, to Peter's. Okay, so you, quote, you <coughs> did talk to a realtor about what would the value of a new home or the size that you're proposing. And, and you, you were told by a realtor that it would be in the $600,000 range. What's the current assessed value of your home now? Uh, 400. A little under. Yeah. A little under. Like okay. 380 maybe. Yeah. Okay. So that's the difference of 200,000. Yeah. All right. The okay. Two to three. Yeah. All righty. Thank you. And All David, right. and then David, th th thank you for clarifying that. That's kind of the, realm I was getting into. So thank you. Appreciate that. Other questions? <clears throat> okay. So what I'm going to do now is uh, go through each of the project description, um, um, excuse me, the different, uh, <coughs> sorry, I like the up. <clears throat> stroke here. Uh, it's not a joke. Um, one through eight, we're going to go through the criteria and we'll just want to read your answers into the record as we go. Um, just so that we can have an audio recording of it. Number one, the need for a variance is due to the unique <clears throat> circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. And you can just read what you provided us uh, okay. in your attachment. Do you have that? Feel free to. Or um, right here, I guess. Abbreviate. Yeah, yeah, you can. Sorry. So on these right Before here, again. <laughs> 
I, no, 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 no. I'm certainly not meaning to for, to abbreviate. I want you to read your entire your entire entry in there. Okay. The whole purpose of us, like we like we know we have this written down in front of us. Everybody yeah. has it. it's logged in the record. But right. for any reason, if this are ever to be pulled for a review, they have to have audio recording as okay. well of it. Of so yeah. seems a little bit redundant, a little bit extra, so to speak. But that's what we have to do. Okay. So A is the no. uh, number one in okay. the the C under C. Uh, yeah, section C. Okay. The zoning is in a V-shape, and in order to add any space to the existing property without creating an eyesore in the neighborhood, the most economic and aesthetically appealing approach would be to build up. Thank you. Uh, number two, the granting of a variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unre excuse me, unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or fair market value of abutting properties. The desired structure would not be detrimental to any existing properties, and it would not produce an undesirable change in the neighborhood, as most homes are two-story homes. Okay, very good. Number three, the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or prior owner. The practical difficulty is not a result of an action we or my grandfather, the previous owner, has taken as the building of the home predated any zoning restrictions. Great. Number four, uh, the, no other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except a variance. No feasible alternative to, to acquiring this variance is an option for us at this time. We need to create more space, and building up is the most economic option we that we can find. We have explored the option of moving and consulted several different real estate agents, including Rob D. of Benchmark Real Estate, who has quoted us the cost of an equivalent home in the same area would be in the $600,000 range which we cannot afford. We do not want to move out of the, our town or even our district, so we do not have to change schools for our children. We have also consulted three different contractors who all stated that building out instead of up would be more expensive due to the foundation. Needed, Needed thanks. And changing the layout of the existing floor plan would make it flow, to make it flow. We spoke with Mike Gallant, a contractor with Southern Maine Remodeling, a division of Maine Properties, and he quoted the cost of building up to be about $225,000 to $275,000, and building in addition going out would cost about two hundred seventy-five dollars to three hundred and twenty-five thousand. dollars That's a big difference that would not be we would not be able to afford. Great. Number five, the granting of a variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with surrounding properties. The granting of the variance would bring the property more in line with the surrounding properties as most surrounding homes are two-story homes. We would like to build a Gambrel style second story which would fit well with the coastal style homes as you get closer to the water on Black Point Road. All right. uh, number six, the granting <coughs> of a variance will not have an unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. Uh, building a second story on our home would have less of an environmental impact than if we were to build out and create a larger foundation. Great. Um, the property is not located in a shoreland zone. Or the property is not located in whole or in part within a shoreland area or flood hazard zone. The property is not located in whole or in part within a shoreland area or a flood hazard zone. Great. Um, please demonstrate how the strict application of the dimensional standards of the ordinance uh, to the property for which a variance is sought would both preclude a use of the property that is permitted in the zone for which it is located. Uh, would also result in significant economic injury to the applicant. If the variance wasn't granted, it would be a total loss of the garage and breezeway as it is deteriorating. This would create a significant financial injury to us. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll pose it to the board again. Any final, last questions before we go into public comment? <coughs> okay. Seeing none. Oh, yes. Go ahead, please. This is Richard. Yes, of course, Richard. <coughs> I want to follow up with something that Peter said. That I wasn't completely clear about. The quotes that you got for building out would still require a variance. Well, it would, would result in it, it wouldn't require a variance, it would result in a home that was non conforming because it would have the existing foundation footprint plus some additional footprint beyond that. Is that correct? Yes. So <clears throat> if we wanted to create a situation where you were conforming in all respects. That's what you were getting at. You'd have to tear down the tear house down entirely. The house and reorient the foundation. Correct. And you'd have to. That's what you suggested might be closer to the six hundred thousand. Yeah. Because yeah. essentially, it's a brand new house. Right. Equivalent that, that, to that's what I was getting at. Yeah. Okay. And, and and I just wanted to make sure yeah. I understood that. Question. Thank you. Great. Thank you all. Uh, any other questions? Comments?
Okay, we will move now into the public hearing. Anyone from the public that wishes to speak? Seeing none, I will uh, confirm we did not receive any. We did receive well, some emails, I believe. Didn't we, we? Yeah. we didn't receive emails, Mr. Chair, but they no. included letters uh, of support. That looks like they have been signed yes. by. Yes. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, I can go ahead and do those, please. So there are three here that we have. Uh, the letters are all identical, so I will read one and then list off the names associated with each, uh, with each of the three properties here. To whom it may concern, I am writing in support of the new construction that is proposed for our neighbors, the Bartholomews, at 229 Black Point Road. Respectfully, Bruce Sanford and Lucretia Salvatore. Next, we have Dorothy Grimm and Kai Ne Wong. And lastly, Ken Mary Sanford. So those are three folks that... All looks like they signed each one and submitted them, so thanks for providing them as and well. Are those all the abutters? Yes. Those yeah. are all the abutters for yeah. the applicant's uh, confirmation. All right. <clears throat> so now that we are, any other public hearing? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Let's now deliberate on each one of these criteria amongst the board, and we will vote for each of these as we go. So the first one, the need for a variance is due to the unique circumstance of the property and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Karen. All right. <clears throat> As mentioned this evening, the existing uh, property dimensions are uh, based upon some previous uh, subdivision of uh, properties from uh, past ancestors and relatives uh, that create the unique um, shape that we're dealing with this evening. Um, as such, it would not be common within the district or the neighborhood, um, but is in fact unique to this given property. Thank you. Mr. Bork? Yes, uh, and to that I will add that uh, <clears throat> it is a corner lot, and the uh, side street, the secondary road, is not a public road, which, mean, which renders it non usable to the applicant. And with the uh, <coughs> The V-shape uh, <coughs> property uh, is certainly not uh, typical of the neighborhood <coughs> in general. So that would certainly mean that uh, it's a unique property. Great. Uh, Ms. Stevenson? Uh, I have nothing further to add. All right. Ms. Snow? I agree with the previous comments. Great. Mr. Frawlinger? Nothing to add. Mr. Silva? I'm good. Nothing to add. Yeah, I'll uh, <coughs> just to be back on what Rudy had said, uh, because this previous subdivision was done prior to Scarborough adopting an ordinance, you look at other houses that are also on Black Point Road, the setbacks from the front of the road are very similar, yet they are hindered by this, this interesting V-shaped lot because they don't have that side-to-side -side, uh, variability and flexibility with their building envelope that other uh, buildings have in that space. Uh, all those in favor of criteria number one being met, please raise your hand so that I may see. That looks like a unanimous vote. Uh, any opposed? I see none. The granting of a variance will not produce an undesirable change in the <coughs> character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or fair market value of abutting properties. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Freilinger. Um, I'll uh, refer back to the uh, appellant and, and again, the, the, the houses here on Black Point Road face Black Point Road. So um, to switch the orientation or demand a switch in the orientation would be um, not in keeping with the neighborhood. And again, most houses on that um, uh, on Black Point Road are two story houses. So I think they've met the uh, requirements of this of this item. Very good. Mr. Silkman. <clears throat> I would only add that each of the abutters has approved uh, <clears throat> of the project, and if it were going to have any detrimental effect on their fair market value, I suspect that they would not have. A fair point. Mr. Fair? Agreed. Um, as we've heard a little bit about the cost estimates that we'll speak to a little bit later, um, the proposed renovations to the property would um, add value to the existing, uh, replacing any of the um, deteriorating garage or walkway, um, which in providing value to this site would help support the abutting properties. And as Mr. Fung already mentioned, um, adding the second story will make it more a little bit more in conformance with uh, the neighborhood. Great. Thank you, Mr. Karen. Mr. Bork? No further comments. Ms. Stevenson? No further comments. Ms. Snow? 
it's not an undesirable change and will enhance the neighborhood. Very good, thank you. I'll also note that um, not not in direct relation to this question, but more of two questions if we were to combine them together, but there are only other alternatives. This is related to number four. Uh, oddly placing the garage to conform to the lot size in here would uh, create an unreasonably potentially detrimental effect if you're looking at a very odd shaped house in a neighborhood that may affect uh, uh, neighbors and abutters um, property valuation. So there's also that consideration if you're trying to look between the lines here as well. Uh, all those in favor of criteria number two being met, please raise your hand. Okay, opposed? That is unanimous for passing. Um, number three, the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or prior owner. I'm going to start down here in the snow. Uh. The difficulty is not a result of the applicant. The house was uh, built before zoning laws. And the way it happened. Very good. Ms. Stevenson? Yeah, I agree. I think um, they've demonstrated <coughs> that it's not anything on any action that they've taken, but just it's a really interesting shaped lot, and um, they're trying to make it work with what they've got. Great. Mr. Bork? Agreed. Mr. Karen? Agreed. Based on the age of the home and when zoning um, and setbacks were applied to the property, uh, this is not uh, um, due to the current owner or the prior. Mr. Freilinger? No, agreed. And we'll deal with this a little bit later, but this is one of those, uh, this is about as unique a property shape or a, or a lot shape as we could um, determined, so I think we have to um, uh, uh, err on the side of, of, of granting this one. So, I agree. Mr. Sutton? <clears throat> I agree. Excellent. Uh, the only thing they'll add in here, help when it was pointed out, the practical difficulty is not the reaction uh, action taken by the previous owner. Um, the building was, has been passed down generation to generation, so um, that is also a feeling that should be taken into account as well. All those in favor of criteria number three um, being met, please raise your hand. All opposed? Okay, that is unanimous. It passes. Uh, number four, no other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except for a variance. Mr. Karen. Agreed. We've heard this evening that other considerations for the site, the property, the location of the garage, and the second floor have been considered based on the setbacks and the unique V-shape of the property. <clears throat> but um, in order to accommodate those, a potential variance would still be required. So. Um, if they're not seeking this variance, another may be sought. Very good, Mr. Bork. Uh, there are only two other options that uh, were, were possible to consider, and one would be rotating its uh, building you know, 90 degrees, which would uh, make it out of character to the neighborhood. Um, and the second uh, one was to keep the existing footprint of the base house but to put the garage further back or in the front. And uh, again, that would uh, not look, not be in keeping with the character of the neighborhood. Uh, so this is really the only realistic uh, option. Very good. Ms. Stevenson? Yeah, I agree. I think it's, um, it's not that there's no other feasible, you can make it work, but this is the one that checks all the boxes for conformity of the neighborhood and, you know, face the way it's going to face and, and everything. So, and economically, um, yeah, I, I don't see any other fully feasible alternative here. Cool. Ms. Snow? Yeah, adding the second level is the most economical and will help this family stay in the neighborhood. Mr. Freilinger? Uh, agreed, and I'd emphasize um, Ms. Snow's comments, it um, <clears throat> keeps a family in the neighborhood, and um, uh, the only other feasible option with this very bizarre property is to tear it down, and I, I think that's going to be a substantially above the 325 quoted um, for keeping it within the footprint, so um, I think they've met this, yes. Mr. Silkman? <clears throat> I agree. I, I would like to just qualify and say I, I don't think there really is a feasible alternative. I mean, I, I'm a little uncomfortable with <clears throat> saying that there are feasible alternatives here because I, I really don't think there are feasible alternatives. And I think that's what everybody's really saying, yeah. is that there are no feasible alternatives. 
it. So I'm in agreement. I would uh, concur as well, Mr. Silkman. I don't think they really have a, a feasible alternative here. Uh, as was pointed out by Mr. Bork, you could put the garage in the front or in the back, but then you're looking at um, the criteria of number two, uh, having an unreasonably detrimental effect on either use or fair market value of abutting properties, as well as number five, as, and we'll get to, but bringing the applicant's property into more, more conformance with surrounding properties as far as if you're looking at it from an aesthetic and characteristic point of view. Um, so I, I agree that there is no other feasible alternative here. All those in favor of criteria number four being met, please raise your hand. All those against, please raise your hand. That is unanimous, uh, yes. Uh, number five, um, the granting of a variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with surrounding properties. Mr. Frelinger. Um, I think we've met this in prior discussions, but um, <clears throat> the, the, the proposal is very much in the line with other um, uh, properties on Black Point Road, and again, if they were to try anything else, it would it would actually take it away from being in conformance with houses in the neighborhood. So I think they've met this admirably. Thank you, Mr. Silkman. Mr. Karen. Agreed. The second story, um, bringing it in more in conformance with nearby properties. Mr. Bork. Agreed. Uh, Ms. Stevenson. Agreed. And I agree as well. It's more the the second story is more similar, conforming to other uh, properties in the area that have similar. Um, similar building footprints. And I agree as well. I am sorry, Ms. Snow. <laughs> I apologize. Please forgive me. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor of criteria number five being met, please raise your hand. All those opposed? Uh, passes unanimously. Uh, number six, the granting of a variance will not have an unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. Ms. Snow. I believe putting in the second story is the least impact. <coughs> <clears throat> Ms. Stevenson? Yeah, I mean, uh, at, you know, that's less of um, landscape and potential trees. I don't know what the exact uh, foliage there is around there, but building that versus out is going to be um, not going to have an unreasonable adverse effect on the environment. Mr. Bork? The um, request uh, will have no impact because it doesn't change the footprint of the building. Mr. Karen? I agree the footprints will not be changing and the pitches of the roof and the drainage off sites will not change this either. Great. Mr. Frelinger? I think we should not forget that the, um, the structure itself is deteriorating and probably creating environmental impact by its deterioration. So, um, yeah, I think we've got this. Mr. Rosilfa? <clears throat> I agree. Excellent. I'll also uh, inc include that disrupting the environment around the property, it's not just the f actual physical impact of digging up earth and expanding this facility, this, uh, this facility, this building's footprint, but uh, you're talking about construction equipment mobilization as, as well. Any kind of greenery, trees, small bushes that ha would happen to be around here would likely um, potentially be taken out by any kind of construction equipment going in there. You can also factor in cost of ownership afterwards because you have yeah. higher heating costs to heat a bigger footprint. That's very true as well. Uh, uh, when you're looking at the... Material waste, you know. If you're looking at a slab, heat, trying to heat a slab, especially with an existing slab and then an existing foundation, tying those two together is never uh, is never a challenge. Is always a challenge. Uh, all those in favor of number six being met, please raise your hand. That vote is unanimous. Yes. Any opposed? Seeing none. Number seven. Uh, the property is not located in whole or in part within a shoreland area, as defined. Um, in 38 MRSRI subsection 435, or flood hazard zone, is defined in the Town of Scarborough Floodplain Management Ordinance. Um, Ms. Snow. It is not in a floodplain. I can Actually, probably save you thank the you, time. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Crow, Mr. Lawrence, <laughs> have you confirmed Let me not... confirm that it is not in a shoreland zone or a floodplain. Thank you, and I normally ask you that question. I'm not sure what's with me tonight. Um, all those in favor of criteria number seven being met. We agree with the town. <laughs> All those, uh, any, all those opposed, seeing none, this passes uh, unanimously. And lastly, please demonstrate how the strict application of the dimensional standards of the ordinance to the property for which this variance is sought would both preclude a use of the property that is permitted in the zone which is located and would also result in significant economic injury to the applicant. And I'll start with you, Mr. Silkman. 
<clears throat> I think the applicant has demonstrated that the alternative is a substantially more costly option <clears throat> that would be beyond their financial capability. So I think they've made that demonstration uh, of practical difficulty. Mr. Fallinger? And I, I'd agree. And, and again, we, we've come back to this. The nature of this particular lot is such that if they were to strictly meet the dimensional requirements of, uh, of staying um, fully within the zoning requirements, it would, number one, um, be inappropriate for the neighborhood, and number two, be cost prohibitive to actually implement. So I think they've met this, and, uh, and we should move forward. Mr. Karen? Agreed. Um, if there was an attempt to fit the dimensional standards, then previous uh, questions that we've discussed this evening would not be met. Um, uh, so that's in regard to the dimensional standards. And as for the significant impact, there was um, information provided this evening and discussion about potential quotes for the possibilities of um, expanding horizontally versus vertically in comparison to relocating from the site. Uh, the demolition and also the personal value, um, having uh, the property and the family can pass down accordingly. Thank you, Mr. Karen. Mr. Bork? No further comments. Ms. Stevenson? I'm in agreement with my colleagues. Ms. Snow? I'm in agreement. Thank you. Uh, I'll add on, tag on to what Rudy was uh, stating. When you're talking precluding use of property as permitted in the zone, the unique size and dimensions of a lot to have a similar structure of this size where you're front facing to Black Point Road that everybody <laughs> sees already in very similar scenarios throughout these houses is precluded here because of the dimensional uh, restrictions we have because of that V-shaped lot. They wouldn't be able to build that in its current standing there today, even though a lot of other houses in that neighborhood are similar. Uh, and the significant economic injury uh, we've discussed tonight provided by the applicant that any sort of rotation or expansion of the building footprint just makes it financially uh, not feasible from a construction constructability standpoint. Uh, those in favor of criteria number eight being met, please raise your hand. Any, uh, um, any opposed? Seeing none, it passes unanimously. I'll entertain now a motion to approve. <coughs> Appeal number 2741. Mr. Bork? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Karen seconds. Is there any further discussion or comments? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your hands. That vote is a unanimous EA and the appeal passes. Congratulations. Thank you guys so much. You're very welcome. Good luck. All right, yes, good luck. Um, so let's look at zoning board comments. Mr. Longstaff, do you have anything for us uh, this, this month? Um, I do not have anything this month other than to say that uh, appreciate um, participation in our workshop last month uh, with Phil Saucier. Um, I hope that those that attended found it beneficial. Um, you know, we certainly think we have the opportunity to do that again in the, in the coming year. Um, I also believe, and I, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't confirm this before the meeting. I just thought of it. Um, I think there's another MMA workshop coming up. There is. I got an email about it. Um, and Dave, it's on the day before our next meeting. The day before our next meeting. And it's a Zoom meeting. And it's so a Zoom you don't meeting. have to go there physically. You can participate uh, on Zoom. Right so, so for those that weren't able to attend either the, the previous MMA or, or Phil Saucer's workshop, I, I would highly recommend um, any cost obviously would be borne by the town for that. Mm. Um, so if you just want to let uh, Doreen or I know, we'll make sure that you get registered. And I would recommend that everyone that can attend that, that, that hasn't had training. Um, it's certainly, it's always good. It's a good, good refresher. Um, and I think I'll probably try to try to attend it myself because it's been a few years since I've I've done that. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd, I'd just like to add on to that, if I may, Brian. Sure. Um, uh, I find these very very useful, very very helpful. I try to go to one a year when I can. Um, like I said, the the trainings are paid for by the town, so there really is zero cost impact. What's yes? Sorry, I missed that. So what's the topic? 
Uh, it's the same uh, <coughs> Boards of Appeals training yep. that we went oh, to, that you and I went to a month or so okay. ago. Yep. They, so they, yeah, they offer them a few times a year. <coughs> and this one that's being offered is going to be, I believe, but we will check this via email, uh, December 13th. That's uh, the day before our meeting, right? Um, yeah, it's a Zoom meeting. Tuesday, December 13th, it's virtual, so you can take it from your house. Um, just kind of have it on the background if you're doing something else in your house, if, if you're a, not able to really focus intently uh, listen to it. Um, it's very, uh, it's a very good wealth of knowledge, especially um, for what we do here and how technical that we need to get uh, and how a lot of times we need to keep the blinders on just looking at strictly what's in our packet, what's on the application, and trying to keep uh, keeping us on the straight and narrow. So I would highly recommend any, any all of us take that uh, as those as those come up. Preferably, you know, once a year if you can. Uh, I guess the second one. I guess we don't really need to. Um, we don't need to vote tonight because well, that's, no, that's we're next not month. prepared to do that. Yeah, if no, you want to discuss that, um, that's fine. Yeah. But, uh, but um, <coughs> um, it's okay. It's all right. I just. It's all right. You, are you okay? Do you need a? <laughs> Will we need to do compressions or anything? <laughs> okay. I think we need to I'm keep. Really I'm just, it. I'm just going to get my card out. <laughs> I actually, am, I am CPR no, I'm certified. Sorry. I'm just trying not to be disruptive. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I was trying to make it better and make it worse. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I have any. No, you're right. Yeah, be, so, yeah, we're not going to do any nominations or anything for next month. But, but, but we should talk about it. Talk about being prepared to make nominations next month. Yes. And um, vote on it next month. And, um, so and, we're going to nominate and vote on the same night. Yeah, 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 it's a pretty straightforward procedure. Um, someone's nominated, they accept or they uh, graciously deny. Um, and uh, once both positions have been nominated and accepted, they are voted on by the board, and the gavel is exchanged, and that's it. Um, it's very straightforward, but I just want to give, make sure. Uh, I guess uh, make. I want to make myself available to anybody on the board who would like to know any more information about what it's like to be chair or vice chair. Um, reach out to me. Uh, you all have my email address. If I can, uh, I, I know I spoke to Christine, um, asking a lot of questions, and thank you very much for that, and a few others as well. Um, I welcome any kind of questions uh, and thoughts about you know future roles on the board and what what is really entailed with wielding the gavel. Um, as you can see, I am occasionally somewhat of a mess up here uh, with, with uh, just trying to keep track of all my papers. So physical management is very good and uh, very key. Um, but I guess I would encourage anybody who has any interest in running for a board position or a board position in the future. <coughs> You don't necessarily have to be ready to, uh, or just be being prepared to step up and take the reins next next month for all next year, maybe in a year or so you might want to think about doing it. And I'm just uh, letting you folks know that I'm making myself available to you all in case you all have any questions. I have a slightly different question. Um, sure. We've got. Um, will we have vacancies at the end of the year? Um, and, and I'm kind of curious about the. Who's falling off, or, or or whether we we're in that sort of season where maybe we should be contacting the nominations subcommittee of the town council with names. Do we have any, or? Uh, well, since this I is think you're falling off, right? You're, you're I I, out, I am. Right? Yes, Rudy and I are. He's, yeah. Um, just to, to, just as a point of order, he is not terming terming out. He lied. Okay. Not which is not okay. which is not a trait what? that we want to see in the new chair. <laughs> I was misinformed. I was misinformed. Sure. Okay. Let's call it misinformed. Thank sure. you. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. So he's not terming out, but he wishes to leave us. Rudy wishes to leave us because he's actually busy doing other things. Yes. So <laughs> okay. true. Very true. Virtual. Whereas, whereas you don't really have a good excuse. I don't have it. So I, um, I thought I. So that would leave three. That would leave one vacancy. Gotcha. Um, but the, we do like we, we yeah. could we can only do three three year terms, right? I, I think that is the town. Yes. Yeah, so and when I when I came, when I came on, I was fulfilling the remainder of a term from somebody else. Yeah. Ah, That's okay. why gotcha. I have another. So he didn't have a full term. I didn't. I didn't, didn't know that yeah. when I. Yeah, I didn't realize which, which that when I came on. 
Yes. yes. Uh, I was, yeah. But, I yeah. just want to go on record. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've been called worse things in this. Uh, in this <laughs> <running record. laughs> yes, yeah. So, um, but okay, just just to be clear, <clears throat> that, that, that's helpful. Thank you. As far as we know, um, we're gonna have. Uh, we'll just need two alternates. So for the for the next year. Mr. Stolman and I will move up. Yes. In the ranks. Yes, I um, believe so. Or is that? I, I have to confirm. I, I don't believe. That, see, I think that's a fallacy. I think that yeah, that's the assumption. The, spot, as well. um, yeah. the appointments committee is the one that makes yeah. the determination. Yeah. So yeah. it's not a it's not a zoning board determination. It can be a recommendation, mm -hmm. but it's it's not the zoning board has no 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 power to appoint or reappoint. Mm -hmm. It's the appointments committee. Okay. And, okay. And, and I think that. Therefore, those of her, those of us on the board should drop a note into Don and and Jean Marie saying we should have <clears throat> our alternates elevated to full voting power because these guys have been great. We love you guys. So yeah. I I will. Well, um, well, I mean, before I did, one of the unless you don't that, want to. I, mean, <clears throat> well, I just wanted to let folks know that um, I'm probably not going to be able to make the first three or four meetings next year. Mm -hmm. Now, as an alternate, I figure, well, that's all right. But as a full member, it could be problematic. And so the rest of the time, I'm available. So it's like it's a wintertime, sure. summertime problem. Sure, sure. No, I understand. Um, but I just want to let folks know that that's the case. Yep. Okay. And, I mean, we don't... We don't actively recruit as a board for uh, filling in positions. Real, a lot of it's just word of mouth, people that we know, other folks that we know. Um, oh, I encourage you to actively recruit. Yes. Yes. You, yes well, yes, you do. Act, yes, we uh, we're encouraged to individually actively recruit, but we're not, not as, a board. Not as I, on I behalf you. of the town uh, and as a legal entity actively recruiting or conscripting um, people. As Brian did to me, that, that how I got here. I told um, I, I did not conscript you. I only told you if you wanted your building permit, you had to join the board of appeals. <laughs> yep, that's, yep, that's her. her I don't think that was conscription at all. It wasn't a building permit. I was just moving here. Um, so, anyways, all joking aside, um, always be on the lookout for any folks that you live near, people that you know, folks that are looking to volunteer um, um, and perform their civic duty. And uh, it's, it's one, one time a month. We have a good group of folks that are here. Uh, and we have been uh, shorthanded on the board before. We have had meetings with four members only. Um, in the events of a tie, the applications fail. Uh, and applicants know that. And uh, we do our best. Uh, the town, town employees, appointments committees, and individually, we do our best to try to find uh, anybody to help um, volunteer for the board. So. Yes. Yeah, I have two that um, the reason we have alternates is so that we have flexibility amongst all board members to not necessarily be here for every single meeting. Correct. As Mr. Silkman said, okay, he's, he can't be here for three meetings. That's okay because the alternates can fill in right. if he were to be a regular board member. Right. So that's not a reason not to be a regular board member. I would agree. Yeah. I would agree. But in, as, as Brian says, uh, I will write to the appointments committee as well and just see yeah. what it would take or just to put the word in their ear of we don't need we don't need uh, new active board members we need new alternates yeah because we want to make sure that the folks who have put time in on this board uh, who are now experienced having gone through a year or multiple years of experience here um, uh, get see their due and, and become full voting, voting members. Though so I believe we all have all at all this here, as you've seen, have had the chance to vote as a full voting member at one point or another this year. Uh, so I will write to the appointments committee. Maybe Brian, if you would um, mention it to the powers that be as well, that this would be our desire. If they need something in writing, I will provide it. Um, if I'll my email to the yeah, if my email to those appointments committee uh, chairman or chairperson doesn't work out. Um, that's all that I have. Uh, and like I said, any questions that anybody has, feel free at any point. Please reach out. And um, I will yield to Brian. Before, yeah, just one last thing. Sure. Just want to mention, you know, uh, Veterans Day is Friday. And Thank you, Brian. And certainly want to extend our appreciation to all of those who are serving in uniform. And, and um, also Thanksgiving's rolling up. And so before our next meeting, uh, wishing everyone a happy Thanksgiving. I forget we miss Thank all you. those together. Yeah. Thank you, Brian, for reminding us of that. That was very nice. Thank you. Uh, I will attend, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So 
Mr. Bork, second. All in favor, raise your hands. Unanimous. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>